Okay, here's something very interesting. See, this is the Redmi Note 13 Pro and see on their website, it says it has Corning Gorilla Glass Victus. But now, if I scratch it with the coin, it scratches. Victus shouldn't scratch so easily. Or here's another example. These are two phones with fastest UFS 4.0 storage. And now if you do a speed test, OnePlus 12R shows up a slower and closer to UFS 3.1. But OnePlus advertised the OnePlus 12R as UFS 4. So are these brands lying to us? Are they trying to fool us? Like yes, few days ago, OnePlus went back and changed the storage type to UFS 3.1. Hmm. So in this video, I'll tell you six ways smartphone companies are trying to fool you and how you can be wiser. Subscribe to TechWiser. Stick around till the end of the video. Let's go. Now let's begin with the most controversial and confusing processor names. Back in the day, processor names were very simple. Snapdragon 845, 855, 865. The higher the number, the better the performance. So simple. But now, let me show you. This is Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 and it scores around 6,66,000 on 2. This phone has Snapdragon 7S Gen 2. So you would assume Gen 2 means better than Gen 1, right? But have a look at this. It scores less than Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. Like, what? How can Gen 2 score less than Gen 1? And things are even crazier on Team MediaTek. This is the specs of Dimensity 1080 in 2022 and now here are the specs of Dimensity 7050 that came out in 2023, one year later. Corporate wants you to find the difference between the two. No, go ahead. Find the difference, I'll wait. They are identical. I'll give you another example. Dimensity 1050 and Dimensity 7030 specs are identical. I just named two of these, but many of their processors got this treatment. MediaTek just took their old processors from 2022, changed the name and sold it as a brand new processor in 2023. It's like giving the same old wine in a new bottle and charging extra money for it. The only processor series safe from this weird naming scheme is Google's Tensor, but let's not get into this hot topic here. So what's the fix? Well, unless brands simplifies their naming scheme, the best thing that you and I can do is more research before buying a smartphone and do your own homework before buying. But if you insist, here's what roughly it is. Snapdragon 8 series and Dimensity 9000, it is still expensive and flagship. Snapdragon 7 series and Dimensity 8000, it is around 25 to 30,000. Snapdragon 6 series and else, it is mostly in budget 20, 25,000. But there are still exceptions to this rule. So do note that. Up next, we have the gimmick of gorillas. And this took us about two years to understand. To demonstrate, let's take two phones. This is the Redmi Note 13 Pro and OnePlus 11. Both of these have Corning Gorilla Glass Victus protection. Now I'll take this coin and scratch both. And if you see, the scratches kind of start appearing on the Redmi Note 13 Pro, but on the OnePlus 11, it is pretty fine. So did Redmi lie? Is it not really Corning Gorilla Glass Victus? Well, not really. So have a look at this. This is the official page of Corning, the makers of Gorilla Glass. And here it clearly states that the thickness of a glass can be anywhere from 0.4 mm to 1.2 mm. More thickness is equal to more protection, better scratch resistant. And I'm assuming it is more costly too. Also, it is totally on the brand to decide which thickness they will use. So say Cyan and me are a company, Cyan chooses to go for 1.2 mm thickness and I go for 0.4 mm thickness. Both of us can claim to have Gorilla Glass Victus protection and both of us aren't promising how hardness it has, how thick it is, how much drop resistance you get. Nothing. So on the spec sheet, it will read Corning Gorilla Glass Victus, but in reality, two smartphones using same glass protection will not be the same. Same, same, but different. Now there is a clear cut solution for us here. No matter what protection your phone has, no matter how costly your phone is, glass is glass, glass will break. We insist you always use a tempered glass. That way you have another layer of protection and you can change the tempered glass whenever you want to. And number four, we have the gimmicks of mini sun or simply put the brightness level gimmick. To demonstrate this, let's take three phones. Motorola Edge 40, 1200 nits peak brightness, iPhone 15 Pro Max, 2500 nits peak brightness, and one plus 12, 4,500 nits peak brightness. I'll set them in auto brightness mode and play an HDR YouTube video. Now, I don't know how much it is showing on camera, but all of them appear to be equally bright. In fact, I think Moto H40 looks the brightest, but something here doesn't make sense, right? Now to understand why this is, you need to know there are three types of brightness level. Number one, manual brightness, which we do by moving the brightness slider. Number two, high brightness mode. This activates when brightness mode is set to auto. Peak brightness, this is the max brightness a phone can reach under specific conditions. Like when you're watching your HDR videos and there's an explosion, and then that part of the screen will reach maximum brightness. But this peak brightness does not happen throughout the screen. 
and it doesn't even last for that long. Like only a few pixels will hit that brightness for a few seconds. The usable brightness which you will see in outdoors under sunlight is high brightness mode or HBM. But brands play the number game, they'll advertise the peak brightness. Reminds me of those local tuition classes where one child scores 99% and they advertise that. Are majority scored less than 80%. Who'll say that? Tell us the average percentage scored by all your students. So be wiser, don't buy a phone based on the peak brightness. Rather, look out for the HBM high brightness mode numbers. The next one is kind of a minor one. Now, I'm sure you must have heard these terms like in-sensor crop, lossless zoom and all of that, which would give you the impression that you don't need dedicated zoom. So let's put that to the test. We have the S23 Ultra that has a dedicated 10x optical lens. And this is the S24 Ultra, which shoots at 5x, but then crops into 10x. And see the pictures? The photo from the dedicated 10x lens is sharper and has more clarity. So it's pretty evident that optical zoom is better than digital zoom. That being said, I must say that on a scale of gimmickness, this is kind of like 5 out of 10. But Apple advertising that the phone has 7 camera lenses in their pocket. But that is kind of wrong, but this is still a 5 out of 10 gimmick. Now this next gimmick is something I personally fell for. In Android smartphones, a trend have started of advertising the ESO software updates you get when you buy this phone. Samsung started it, it worked. And then every brand started three year update, two year update, seven year update. But here's where the problem comes. Moto H20 Fusion was launched in 2021. It was expected to get Android 13 in 2022. It is 2024, it still hasn't received Android 13. A lot of Motorola phones are yet to receive Android 14. Get that. And it's not just Motorola. A lot of Redmi phones are waiting for Android 14 update. So just promising Android updates is not enough. How early do you get them is also important. Like, what's the point of buying a brand new smartphone for software updates if you get Android 14 in 2026 while the rest of the world is enjoying Android 16? Now finally, number one, and this is probably the most shady tactic in my books and every smartphone brand is doing this to you. Brands are now revealing their price based on card offers. Like see this advertisement, it would give the impression that the phone cost 2699, but in reality, it costs 3000 more. Smartphone brands have stopped advertising the original price of the smartphone, be it Samsung, Realme, everyone. In fact, the Amazon app, if you open now, shows the EMI price of a smartphone in big letters rather than the MRP. Now, here's the scenario. Smartphones are getting expensive. They compensate that price hike by giving card discounts. But now, if you have to buy a phone, in order to get discount, you have to get that particular bank card, mostly credit card. And then you end up buying a credit card as well as a phone. And just to show you, average selling price of a smartphone in India in 2020 was 11,500. In 2023, it is 21,000. Almost two times increase and a big reason is the credit card usage in India. Statistically, people who use a credit card spend more. Not the video that you expected, but that's personal finance 101. Don't use credit card that much. Now, having said all of that, how can you save yourself from these gimmicks? Sadly, there's not a single rule. As simple as it sounds, stay aware, watch multiple reviews of whoever you trust before you buy something, and never buy a product just because it's latest and you're getting an early offer. The offer will always be there. Wait for user reviews to come. On that note, this is Pradeek signing off. See you in the next video. No pew pew for today. It's serious.